Hello, welcome to Proximity Church, our final Sunday of the year. Can you believe it? We have pretty much made it through 2020, and what a year it's been. But we are going to celebrate this Sunday. There is so much for us to celebrate this year. It's incredible. And uh, there are some silver linings that I can't wait to share with you. So it's going to be an exciting Sunday morning. Let's jump in right away with the ladies as they lead us. Uh, Katie and Karina are going to lead us in worship this morning. So let your hearts just enter right in this final Sunday of 2020. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, ladies, for leading us this morning. You uh, both, as well as Galen, have done an incredible job this year, uh, and we are so, so very grateful for it. If you've been following along in our series, we have uh, we began a series back in the beginning of December called The Light Has Come. We've looked at uh, the light uh, in the sense of joy and peace and hope as the, the candles are lit in our lives with Mary, uh, with the shepherds, with the wise men. 
And today being that final candle, that final light of grace, the Christ candle, Jesus makes all the difference in our lives. And we're going to celebrate this morning. I mean, in the midst, as I've said, of a crazy year, this is a time for us to celebrate God's grace. And uh, so I hope you're buckled in. Uh, as I said on Sunday, if you were, if you were with us, um, I hope you're relaxing at home uh, in your pajamas, eating pancakes and bacon, whatever it might be, uh, with your family members. And uh, as we do, let's really just enjoy this final Sunday together and God's grace that's bestowed to us. Well, Lord, thank you that as we are in our homes this morning, we are not alone. You are with us. Even if we are on our own in our home or maybe surrounded by friends and family, you are with us. It makes all the difference. So Jesus, I thank you that you are the light that has come. And if we, we've we just celebrated uh, Christmas and the beauty of that truth, Emmanuel, God with us. We pray that this morning in our hearts, we would uh, fully know and fully express the thanksgiving, the gratitude of what you've done in our lives. And so we pray it in uh, Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's together take a look at where we were back in March of 2020. Now, I know that's a long ways back, but we had begun a series. So before we get to grace and what Jesus is doing in our lives, uh, right now, this Sunday is the final Sunday in our series. Just remember back, and I've got a little picture here that will come up about the series that we were in. Do you remember this? It says, Facing stormy weather. We were in Romans 5, reading verses 1 through to 11, and the subtitle was, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. I don't know if you remember this or not, but we were right in the midst of this series, and then March 8th, uh, we didn't get to meet on March 15th. Schools closed, the pandemic had hit, and closures happened all across the world, and certainly in Canada and Ontario. And uh, we were scrambling. And in the midst of this series on stormy weather, and I love that the Spirit of God has a way of leading our hearts and preparing us for what's coming our way. Nothing takes him, nothing takes him by surprise. And so this morning, as uh, we talk about this, I wanted to show you a little scripture, just a little piece of what we were looking at that morning when pandemic came. All right, so look at the scripture with me from Romans 5. Now we read from verses 1 to 11, but I want you to look here at verse 3 with me. It says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Look at those words I've highlighted for you. We also glory in our sufferings. And that brings about this hope. And that hope does not put us to shame. This morning, I want to take this word, which is truth and life, and I wish I could kind of unzip the screen and just place it right in your heart today. That whatever we're going through, whatever the circumstances might look like, and certainly the Bible declares this in Romans, that we're going to have these times, these sufferings, but we can glory in them. We can find the silver linings in them that maybe at first we can't see, but as we peer a little deeper into what God is doing, we get to see it. And this hope arises. Well, that's what we're going for this morning, right? To get ourselves uh, in a place, not sort of hyping ourselves up, but really saying, God, you are doing some things in the background and forgive us for missing all that you did and focusing a little too much maybe on what didn't happen this year. So we want to dig into that. And as we do, I want to uh, provide you with some context for where we're going. So take a look at this next slide and let's, uh, let's dive in together. You remember these uh, signs? Probably you saw some of them on the news. COVID-19, a new phrase to many of us, the coronavirus. Here's a sign that was in all of our places, public and school and private even. Stop, and we had to wear face masks and all the rest. And this was very normal for us, right? 
schools are closed down. We meet in a school, so we could no longer meet, and people were at home, and we were on our own, and fear began to uh, settle in. You remember the toilet paper sprees? People were flocking to stores to get as much toilet paper as they could and all these other supplies, a lot of panic. Well, we were in the midst of that as well. And as a church, we had to figure out what this meant. And so as you see those slides, maybe it brings up some memories, maybe even now, because we're not fully through it. We're now in the midst of another shutdown here in Ontario, Southern Ontario. And um, even though it's Christmas, it's difficult to be in this place still. So what does Jesus have to say about this? Well, Jesus, when he was getting ready to go away, had a lot to say to his disciples about what was coming their way and wanted to speak courage into their hearts and lives as well. And so here's Jesus' words in the midst of suffering. We see this. He says, in this world, you will have trouble. What a guarantee. (laughs) You're going to have some trouble coming your way. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I'm encouraged today, and I hope you are too, that our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, has overcome the world. So I want you to know today, no no matter what trouble is right now at your doorstep or um, coming your way, and you think it's all over in 2021, we don't know what it holds, but we know who holds the future. And Jesus says, I want you to know something. There's going to be some trouble that's going to come your way, some suffering, as we saw back in Romans 5 and facing stormy weather. But I have overcome the world. There are some things we can give God thanks for. Things that we can celebrate together. Things that we can lift our hands up and say, God, I'm so grateful for what you've done. Yeah, we had to juggle, right? Uh, Look at this next picture. We had to do some things a little differently. Here you can see that we, our school was closed. That's where we meet at St. Stephen's. We had to have some Zoom in. Zoom uh, is a way for us to meet online. So we were trying to meet that way. And you can even see here a picture of my very own living room with my mother-in-law watching me on TV. And I am learning to all of a sudden become a televangelist. Hello. What a time that was to try and learn what this uh, meant and what it was going to look like for us and how we needed to adjust. Uh, Boy, it was a lot of learning for me and I'm sure for you. A lot of adapting, a lot of changing and trying to figure out what's going to come next. So what do we do? Here we are at the end of 2020 and we maybe have more questions than we do answers right now. A vaccine may be coming and maybe that's a solution, but what do we do? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is turn to God's word and see what his will is for us in this situation. So very simply this morning, I have three verses from you and they come from 1 Thessalonians. Let's read them together. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 18 says this, and it's a directive for us. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks In all circumstances, now look at this, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will for us is to rejoice, to pray, and to give thanks no matter what we're facing. Let's look at that first one. Just lean in again and check out these words, rejoice always. Rejoice always that you and I as Christ followers are to look for the silver linings. We're to look for his hand, look for where he's working in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the darkest times, in the midst of wearing a face mask, sanitizing and huddling down, hunkering down in our homes. We are to rejoice. Why? Because he's the hope of the world, folks. He's the light that has come. You and I today are saved. We are forgiven. We are set free because of God who loved the world so much. He gave the great gift of his son, Jesus, for you and I. And so all the rest, it doesn't matter. In light of eternity, this life we're living is but a mist, but a vapor, James says in uh, the word of God. We're here for a while and then we vanish. So folks, may I exhort you and encourage you, let's rejoice. That's what we're going to do this morning. I have so much to share with you, and I'm not going to take a lot more time this morning um, sharing from the Word. I want some of our folks that we've partnered with this year to be able to share with you. 
Before we do, though, I want you to see the second thing that's in this scripture, not just rejoice and find the silver lining to rejoice, but also look at this, to pray continually. That's what it says here, that we are to pray continually. So look for the silver lining, rejoice in what God has done for you, but also he knows you've got issues and concerns and things in your life, so bring them to him, pray to him, submit them to him, surrender them to him. Say, God, you know what's going on with COVID. We don't. So we're praying, God, you will bring an answer. God, that you will be the healer. You will be the one who will show yourself strong. That it's okay, folks, to pray and talk with God. And just a little announcement here. In the new year, the next four Sundays, the first one's in January, we're going to take the month of January, and I want to take that month to teach you about hearing God's voice. So that's where we're going to be in the month of January. I encourage you to take some time to be with us for those Sundays, praying, hearing from him, but also him speaking to us. And how can I know that it's him speaking? You see, prayer is is not just a monologue of me speaking to God, but it's a dialogue. He's got some things he wants to say to me. And as his sheep, as his people, we need to know his voice. So we rejoice always. We pray continually. And here's where we're going to spend the rest of our time this morning, at least the next 10 or 12 minutes together before we wrap up. And that is in celebrating. Look at this next verse. It says, we are to give thanks in all circumstances. I want that just to linger there for a moment. Give thanks in all circumstances. Folks, this is what we're called to do. It's a directive that God gives us. It's a warfare for God uh, that we are given as his people, as soldiers of the cross. That we are to rejoice in him, call out on him, worship, sing as we've done this morning. To pray, to call upon his name, to intercede for us. And then as we're facing every circumstance that comes our way, we are to give thanks to God. Not for the horrible thing that's happening, but that in spite of it, Thank you, God, you're rescuing us. Thank you, God, you're saving us. Thank you, God, that you are the hope of the world. Thank you, God, that you are my joy, my strength. Thank you, God, that you are my peace. That all around is sinking sand, but on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. So this morning, I've done enough yakking. Boy, you've heard me all year, and I want to thank you so much and just take a moment off the top to say thank you to all of the folks at Proximity who have served so faithfully this year. Uh, first, thank you to my board for Deb and Ross and Peter who have served with me so faithfully on the board as we've had to navigate the uh, the changing shifts that we've had. Our worship team for Galen, Karina, and Katie as you've led us so faithfully every single Sunday. Thank you to Rick Thompson and his team, uh, my own son Andrew, Mahesh, and Tina who have been a part of that team uh, on and off throughout the year. Thank you to our serving teams who, since we've gotten back together, have been there every Sunday. And you know who you are. I, I think of the Thompsons. I think of Peter and Hugh Get, uh, Deb, again, some of my board with Ross. And, uh, of course, you know, I, I think of um, the, the people who are uh, serving behind the scenes. And you don't see them because you're not there early enough to. Um, but there are some who are there super early to make sure Everything's ready for you. And so Wayne and Marilyn Barrett, thank you to you for coming so faithfully every Sunday and being there. Marsha with the kids to sit there and make sure they have a craft. There are so many who've been so faithful. Deb has led our ladies group even through this time online. And many of you have prayed one for another. Several of you have taken up ministries of helping with benevolent needs. And thank you to our benevolent team, you who are on that. Thank you to Al and my father-in-law, Roy, for looking after the count and um, making sure that that is in and our bank balances are uh, stable and good. Thank you to all of you. And I, I know I'm probably missing someone, certainly my own family, for putting up with me and, and helping me along the way. We need to give thanks. We need to give thanks first and foremost, though, to God, to the one who saved us, to the one who sustains us, to the one who's preparing a place for us. So let me show you another slide so that we can celebrate really well this morning what God has done in this crazy year. Look at this picture. Here you can see, and I've just put a smattering, really, a collage of different uh, ministries that we have been able to support in this year as our little church proximity. Safe Families, Mercy Tech, Heart for Africa, 
the Salabona Project, Bring Hope, which was a part of first place options in the bottle drive. You can see there the Good Samaritan, the, the shoe boxes, their opportunity, and even a food bank that is run by one of our ladies or operated by one of our ladies for the First Nations. There are so many areas that we were able to as a church because we weren't paying rent on a school, support and help and uh, be a part of this year. There's a silver lining we hadn't thought of. As a matter of fact, there were many as soon as we went online, and as a little church, we weren't planning to be online. But the moment that we did go online, there were many who were online with us, and they could join from Newfoundland and so in the States and other parts of the country, and I was getting notes from them. Um, we were having to find new ways to get on Facebook and social media and YouTube and and get the word of God out there. And I would get reports back from people saying, thank you so much. My grandma's watching. My aunt is watching. Um, Pastor, that really helped me. That teaching was so great. And uh, one of the examples would be this summer through the seven churches of Revelation when we were just going through church by church and looking at those churches and then our own church. I had so many comments from many of you saying, thank you so much for sharing with me. See the word of God, a silver lining with missions organizations we could organizations we could support, with the word of God going forth and worship as the girls led us going forth every Sunday to people who couldn't maybe ever be in Stittsville with us at uh, the school where we meet. And look at this next picture. We even had some weddings that took place. Do you remember this? Here's a picture of my niece, Michaela, and uh, uh, Jeremy, who were married online. We couldn't go and be with them, but here you can see my family dressed up and in our living room and watching them online. We had to adjust, didn't we? Well, I celebrate, though, that it didn't stop the Word of God going forth. It didn't stop missions. It didn't stop weddings and marriages uh, happening and occurring and love continuing Praise God for that. I give thanks to him that in the midst of this, it didn't stop these beautiful things. As a matter of fact, proximity, remember, we had three weddings that took place this year and three couples who are embarking now on their lives together. We give thanks to God for that. Here you can see in each of these pictures with Galen and Matt and then Matt and Karina. And of course, my nephew there, Caleb and Brittany, who were married. All of these couples in the fall. What an exciting time that was to be a part of those lives. Another thing to celebrate. Another thing to say, thank you, God, that these things were things that we could celebrate together. We also had news this year, remember, early in the year and then later in the year of two babies that were born. And so we celebrate those births as well. We thank you, God, that you, uh, babies, you can't stop them, right? They're coming. And so we just thank God that whether it be missions, the word of God, weddings, birth, these things were all continuing to happen. Yes, we had to adjust. Yes, there was trouble that was coming into the world. But thank the Lord that he has overcome the world. And he had a solution even as we adjusted. Now, I want you to hear from four others, four other ministries, and I could have selected a few more, but here are four. And I want, I asked each of these people if they would share their heart for how we as a little church were able to help and bless them. And this is not a boast on proximity, but hear me. The word of God says we are to rejoice, to pray, and to give thanks. We're giving thanks today, folks. That because all of us together did our part in praying and giving financially and supporting these organizations, we were able to do so much more than we could have done alone. The first little picture is a picture of one of the little girls that we have adopted from Heart for Africa. And uh, we are so excited. This was There was a moment for us as a church where we were wanting to do something missional, but also something very specific. And one of our uh, guys that you're going to hear from in just a moment, Ross McPherson, had taken a missions trip uh, to Africa and was part of uh, the team that was there at Heart for Africa and the mission there. And he came back and told us a story about a little girl there who had a very tragic um, accident when she was just a baby and it had burned her face and scarred her face. And her name is Nokopiwa. And Nokopiwa was abandoned by her mom and dad and taken in by Heart for Africa. We had heard her story and around our boardroom table, I said, we've got to do something, folks. Let's, what will it cost for us? What can we do to raise money to help support this little girl in her recovery and in her life? And 
in hearing the gospel and providing for her. And around the table, we knew the amount was about $3,600. And we said as a board, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's take a step of faith. We went to church the next Sunday. And some of you remember, I presented that option to you. And we had covered the first and second year within a matter of, I think, a month. Here's a little picture of Nokopiwa, who, by the way, is now uh, just a, a young, beautiful lady here who got straight A's in her school. You can see this young girl who is so happy. And I hear so spunky, so full of life. And we celebrate being able to be a part of this young girl's life in whatever her future may be. Well, Ross was there in Hartford, Africa, and I asked him if he would share with you a little bit about Mercy Tech Missions as well, which is what he has uh, been a part of as a missions arm uh, with Heart for Africa. So let me introduce you to my friend, Ross McPherson, and then after him is going to follow Kim Sabrin from Safe Families, then Patrick Keiko, who is with Salabona Project, and finally, First Place Options, uh, my friend, Rick Harper, who we've also been able to help uh, and partner with this year. So sit back and enjoy what my friends have to share with you about what it means to partner and give thanks and how we can rejoice. Hey, thanks everybody for your sponsorship of Mercy Tech Mission, uh, uh, changing one life at a time, uh, giving trades to people in uh, foreign countries who uh, can use that as their, their means of uh, being self-sufficient. Uh, I've had the opportunity to go on three trips with uh, Mercy Tech now, all over to Eswatini, Africa, and working through uh, Project Canaan at Heart for Africa. And it's been a fantastic journey for me. Uh, we've seen lives changed. Uh, we've seen skill sets uh, in the people of uh, Eswatini <clears throat> that'll blow you away. Anyhow, I had the opportunity the last time there were 10 volunteers, so we had the opportunity for Canadians to also come over and share the love of Christ and see the love of Christ in action uh, to make a difference in their lives. Uh, I'm planning on going back again as soon as we get a clearance on uh, injured uh, workers and uh, COVID-related related, uh, uh, things out of the way. So I thank you very much for your sponsorship of that. Uh, thank you for your prayers. And would you keep that little country in, in your prayer and keep, um, keep Mercy Tech in your prayer as well. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor Jason, Heather, Proximity. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Kim, and I'm the Regional Director of Safe Families Ottawa. And on behalf of our Leadership Council, our staff, our volunteers, but most importantly, the families that we're serving, thank you. Thank you for your support this year. Thank you for that huge donation of diapers. They are going to go to such good use. Thank you so much. Because of your church and its support, we have been able to serve children for 226 days and 180 nights this year. Absolutely astounding. Most chapters don't even see their first hosting for two years, and it's because of churches like you who have helped us get out of the gate and run faster than we ever thought possible. And there is a family in your congregation that has been so, so instrumental, and you know who I'm going to say, right? Marsha and Kitty O'Brien. They have been so incredible. They were one of the very first host families that were approved here in Ottawa, and they have been matched with many families throughout the year, but one in particular, and this little one is only two, and he has some very special needs, but the way they love on him for exactly the way Jesus created him to be is so beautiful to see, and to see how he lights up when he sees them is so very, very precious. I want to thank Deb and the Proximity Women. You have been champions of Safe Families from the very beginning because you know that some of the women that we work with have come from sex trafficking. They have come from the sex industry and we are wrapping around them and we are breaking that curse and we are seeing their children thrive as they are in this environment of God's love. So Proximity, 
from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I look forward to partnering with you in 2021. The Lord bless you. Pastor Jay and the Proximity family, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of the Sal Bona Project team to give you an update on what your support did for our, our community in Mishlozi, South Africa. You know, like the rest of the world who's been dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic, so too is South Africa. And communities like Mishlozi who are already on hard times with un unemployment and, and you know, all kinds of different poverty needs, they were just devastated, if you can just imagine. So, you know, there was only so much that our Sao Bona team could do uh, with the resources we had, uh, because we already are supporting 40 students with programs and support and mentoring. And we thought, you know, what could we do, uh, even though we had to cancel our programs because of COVID-19, uh, which is unfortunate, but we will resume them. Uh, so we decided as a team that we would do food packages. And so we, we thought maybe we can deliver food to the families because their need, their biggest need was food insecurity, as you can probably imagine. Anyway, that is when Proximity stepped up. And boy, did you guys ever step up. It, it, because of your generosity, we were able to feed all 40 families. And as our team was bringing the food parcels to each family, they were so blessed and excited uh, 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 by the by the just the fact to be able to drop those parcels off to the families so our team in South Africa recently did a zoom call with us and they wanted to just share how excited and how blessed and how how much love they have for the proximity church family you know there is so much work to be done in Mishlozi and other communities like this and we're going to continue to minister to those those people there and we just hope that we can continue to have the support of proximity in the future. Thanks, and by the way, Merry Christmas. Hello, Proximity Church family. Rick Harper from First Place Options here. I just wanted to stop and say thank you. Thank you for partnering with us this year. Um, of any year, we, we probably needed it in some ways more than any this past year. With all the craziness, our clients, uh, the number of clients we're serving has gone up 60% across the board, whether that's uh, post-abortion, whether that's uh, decision aids, uh, pregnancy tests, material supplies, it's all been uh, just crazy busy this year but God's been good and when we've had things when we've had needs it seems like groups like you have shown up and when we couldn't do Operation Baby Bottle and we did the Bring Hope campaign you guys all participated in that and appreciate the Proximity family for doing that when we've had needs for diapers, it seems like Pastor Jay has called me out of the blue. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, he called me and said, hey, we got some diapers, can you use them? Or, and came and brought them to me and uh, they were in and out, a lot of them was the same day. So it really does make a difference. It allows people like us to continue to serve the people who need us at the time that we need us and not have to pull back and so your partnership has just been so greatly appreciated um, all years but but this year maybe even more than than any and so thank you thank you for being there uh, thank you for uh, when we serve someone whether it's uh, um, someone in the midst of an unplanned pregnancy or if it's someone who's a refugee or immigrant and they need help with diapers and material wipes or whether it's um, someone in the high schools or the grade schools who we've adapted our Thrive program to reach them, all of that is happening with your help. And so just, um, I just pray that you are blessed the way you've blessed us to be able to serve people. Um, and, and in a sense, you've partnered with us all through the year. So thank you, and may you have a great holiday season, uh, the best you can possibly imagine. And, uh, and thank you. Boy, I hope your heart has been encouraged this morning. 
As you've heard from these um, four friends of ours and four uh, ministry arms that we have partnered with Proximity, every little bit counts. Every bit matters. The rejoicing, the prayer, the support, the giving thanks, it is making a difference for the kingdom. I want to read in conclusion a scripture over you as we look towards the new year and what it holds in 2021, as we rejoice and pray and give thanks for God's will, that is what it is for us. What can we stand upon with regards to his word and entrusting him? Romans 8 and 28, I want to read that for you this morning and let it sink into your spirit as I read it to you and over you this morning. The word of God says in Romans 8, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Look at this. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or COVID, right? Or a sword? No, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, look at this, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I'm convinced neither death nor life, neither, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Folks, we have reason to celebrate. You're sitting in your living room. I'm in mine right now and with my family, watching myself on TV. I tell you, that's weird. That's an adjustment. Uh, But I miss being with you. I miss where we can see each other face to face and connect. And even the Sundays we have had with the masks on and It's just not the same. I believe there will come a day where we'll be able to get back together and life will be somewhat normal, back to normal. But even if that's not what's going to happen as soon as I'd like it, I know that I can trust in the one who tells me, rejoice, pray, give thanks. In this world, you've got some trouble, but I've overcome it. His name? Jesus. And I tell you what, I'm glad our little church continues to partner, continues to believe, continues to grow. You continue with me to serve. Let's love each other. Let's keep connecting. Let's not let anything separate us from the love of Christ, the grace that he provides, the grace that only he gives. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning as we conclude this year, 2020, and we start to move into 2021. We thank you that you go ahead of us. We give thanks to you, God, that there were so many silver linings in this year. As difficult as it might have been, you have overcome and you have made us conquerors with you. So we give you praise. We lift our voices and we say, thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done and all that you have yet to do. In your mighty name, Lord, amen. Love you, bless you, happy new year, and I look forward to when we can meet in person again. God bless. We'll see you real soon.